Hi, this is Bill Hewitt, PowerStrokeHelp.com. Today we're going to talk about injector cups. Uh, injector cups are a very vital part of the internal workings of a power stroke diesel engine, whether it's a 6 liter or a 7.3. Basically what this cup does is it seals the cooling system from the injector inside the cylinder head. When the injector cup fails, you're going to have a situation where there's no longer a, a seal between the fuel system and the coolant system. Because of the higher pressure of the fuel system, the fuel goes into the coolant. This particular truck is a 7.3 truck, a 2001 model. First, we're going to show you how to identify the problem. Second, we're going to show you how to diagnose the problem. And third, we're going to show you how to repair the problem. Come on, let's take a look at it. The number one indicator that you have a problem with an injector cup is the fact that there will be fuel in your coolant. Uh, usually, it will overtake the cooling system and it will push past the cap. It's important to identify the fuel in cooling system situation early because the longer it stays in there, the more damage it does to all the rubber components of the cooling system, including the upper lower radiator hose, the heater hoses and whatnot. I mean, we can see that this, this bottle is cracked and it's all broken down from the, from the petroleum reacting with the plastic. So if you're doing your underhood inspection and you see that your coolant bottle is overfilled or if it's overflowing in any way, pop the coolant cap off of there. Now this particular truck came in with the coolant cap replaced because the rubber seal was all deformed from reacting with the petroleum. Very often when you remove the cap from the truck, this seal will be all uh, um, deformed and expanded from reacting with the petroleum. So once you identify that you have a problem in your cooling system and that there is actually fuel in the coolant, then it's time to do some investigation. This diagnostic procedure is fairly involved. It requires some special tools like a, a tool to pump up the cooling system to pressurize it. But most importantly, you're going to have to take the injectors out, which requires removal of the valve covers, the valve cover gaskets, all of your fuel injectors are going to have to be removed. While you have the injectors removed, it's a good time to replace the seals and, and check your glow plugs to make sure that they're all in working order. It'd be easy enough to replace it all now while you have it apart. Once you have the valve covers off and the injectors removed, it's easy to see down into the injector cups uh, with relative ease. Some of the ones on the, on the passenger side by the air conditioning box can be a little challenging, but they can be done. It's very important that you take some brake cleaner uh, and some good clean towels. Don't be taking any fuzzy towels and getting fuzz inside this system. You know, good clean shot towels that have been used a bit and, and are washed and nice and dry and clean. The idea here is, is to take the pump here and pressurize the cooling system and watch very closely at, at the injector cups in each of the eight cylinder holes to find which one has the leak. So with each hole nice and dry, it should be relatively easy to see the coolant emerge. After the system is pumped up, you can see the coolant form and push down into the cup. It's a very small hole, you've got to be very patient and you've got to keep the system pressurized. It's helpful to have a friend pump the system while you're observing each individual cup. The only way you're ever going to see this leak is if the cup is extremely clean. It has to be extremely clean and dry. But you, if you look very carefully and take your time, you will find the injector cup that's leaking, or two, or three. So in this particular situation, we've identified that the number two cylinder, which is, happens to be an easy cylinder, thank goodness, is the one that's actually leaking. More often than not, we would recommend that you replace all eight, but this particular customer does not have the time or the inclination and does not want a warranty, so we're just going to replace the one cup. Okay, now that you know which cup you're dealing with, or cups, order the injector cup. This is the part number for the 7.3 cup F4TZ9F538A. Uh, if you do not have a Ford dealer that has one in stock, sometimes you can get them from International, but you'll have to twist their arm to get them to look it up for you because they don't like to sell parts for Fords. You're also going to need a couple special tools here, which is the removal tool and the installation tool. Removal tool, basically what it does is you thread this down into the cup, down inside the cup, and then there's a puller that grabs the top of the hole and extracts the cup from the hole. 
The other thing is, is the, the driver tool. It's real simple, straightforward, Stone Age technology. Uh, you, you put it down in the cup and you drive it in carefully with a hammer. Once you're done pressurizing the system, it's time to depressurize the system and remove the tool. Then we crawl underneath the truck and drain the coolant out. Um, because once you get that cup loose, the coolant's going to drop right down into the combustion chamber, which we don't want to have happen. Once you've got the coolant out of the system, now it's time to go ahead and thread in the extraction tool. We're going to remove the exhaust side rocker arm, the front rocker arm here, so, so we have visual access. It's not really necessary uh, for the extraction process. but. When you start working on some of the rear cylinders, it may be a good idea to go ahead and get these rocker arms out of the way, uh, so you know for ease of, of accessibility. Now I'm a real stickler about the parts coming off and going back in exactly the same spot. Um, order of the parts and how they went in is crucial as far as I'm concerned. If an engine has a couple hundred thousand miles on it and that tip of that that rocker arm has been working on the tip of that that particular uh, push rod for all these miles then why am I going to go mix it up with something else? Uh, the wear patterns have established themselves and it just seems in my mind to be a good idea to just go ahead and make sure that each part goes back together exactly as it came out. So this upper nut here, this 12 point half inch or 13 millimeter head actually drives the tool down into the cup. Right now we're actually threading the tool down into the cup, you know, eight or nine turns, and you don't want to push it when you get it to the bottom. Don't, don't stress it. When it's bottomed, it's bottomed, and that's that. The idea is, is that now once the tool is driven into the injector cup, the outer nut is tightened down against the retaining ring, and this is how it gets pulled out. You're going to have to use a deep, deep three-quarter inch socket how many millimeters is that, Mikey? 19. Go ahead and let's extract this sucker out of here. Out she comes. Move. Out she comes. And it gives very easily. Having the right tools goes a long, long way towards having a happy outcome. Ain't that right, Mikey? That's right. <laughs> there it is. So now the injector cup is loose inside there. It's just a matter of pulling the whole shebang right on out. Just like playing operation when you're a kid. So now that we have it apart, it's apparent that the injector cup has a long crack in it. Probably caused by heat and materials and whatnot and heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down has, has caused a stress fracture in the injector cup. So now we're back to getting the hole that the injector cup goes into clean, 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 clean. You can't get it too clean and dry before we install the injector cup. Now there's going to be some residual glue and whatnot in the hole. It's absolutely imperative for all of that stuff to get cleaned out of there using whatever tools are necessary to do so. It's going to take more than just wiping around in there with some damp rag uh, to get this clean. The cup has to seal against a clean, dry surface in order for this to be a successful repair. A little wire brush like you use for, for cleaning uh, solder and whatnot off copper pipes works real good to reach down in there and uh, clean that hole out. You may get a little debris inside the cooling system there, but you know what? We're going to have to flush all this nasty mess out of there anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Now, you're going to have to clean and clean and clean and clean and clean. Brake cleaner, towels, whatever it takes to get that space clean so that that sealer can seal. I cannot overstress this. Once you get it all nice and cleaned out, put some air down in there and blow all the little residual pieces out. Watch your eyes. Don't have it blow back in your eyes. That brake cleaner gets in your eyes. It's going to sting like a son of a gun. So that's what it should look like down in there. Nice and clean, clean, clean. Now, we're going to use Permatex thread locker green to seal this cup. Now we're going to get out our installation tool when we slide the cup onto the installation tool. Go ahead and slide that off there just a second, Mike. Let me show them something. See, that, that rubber O-ring is crucial to be there because that's what holds the thing on there 
when you turn it upside down. Because remember, you're going to be pointing downhill with this thing and you need that o-ring to hold it on there. Now, make sure that the cup itself is dry and clean using brake cleaner so that our sealer will actually seal up like it's supposed to. So take a little bit of the sealer and put it on the paintbrush or a cotton swab or something and put it on the surfaces inside the head where the cup makes contact. Cup makes contact down in the very bottom and around the very top. That's the only places it makes contact. See the idea of the brass cup is, is to keep the injector cool and they use brass because it transfers heat the best. The idea of the cup is to be able to keep those injectors as cool as possible because remember the tip of the injector is right in the middle of the fire and keeping them cool is the key to having them last. Okay set time is fairly quick on this stuff so we don't want to you know sit around and smoke a cigarette while we're in the middle of this. You got to get it on there and get it get it knocked into the hole fairly quick. Alright. Alright, now you don't need the biggest damn hammer you own to do this. A light tap's all you need until she bottoms out. And you'll feel it once it once it sets. Now you hear that sound? That's when you know she's set. Now you can pull the installation tool out. and your injector cup is installed. Make sure you put the cap back on the thread locker so you have it next time. If you don't put a cap on this stuff it'll harden inside there within 24 hours. That's what a nice new clean injector cup looks like installed in your cylinder head. I like to get the injector nice and clean with new seals and installed as quickly as possible to hold the cup in place while the sealer is curing. Once it's in there, even if you hustled it up, you'd still be a couple hours till you're going to start the engine and that's plenty of time for the thread locker to seal. So now you put the truck back together, uh, you're going to have to replace hoses, possibly a water pump, thermostat, all of the rubber seals have been affected in the cooling system. Depending on how long the fuel was in the coolant will depend on just how much damage was done to the cooling system. I've seen some where we've had to put uh, water pump, radiator, heater core, all the hoses, uh, thermostat. I mean, it's, it got carried away because it had it like this. The problem had been there for a very long time. But suffice it to say that in this situation, having the correct tools is absolutely crucial. These are available on the internet if you search for them. Uh, I believe Snap-on can order them in. It's, it's about $500 worth of tools to make this happen. But to do it right the first time, that's what it requires.